Hi again then guys and welcome to episode 36 of Import Knights, the review series for Gran Turismo's JDM performance cars and this particular vehicle actually goes beyond what you'd normally think of as a JDM car, stuff like Supras, Skylines, Integras, those very street based vehicles that do have racing versions but you primarily think of them as street cars, first and foremost, modified versions of existing, relatively normal, affordable production vehicles. But this particular vehicle, although yes, in that category as well for sure, slightly deviates from the norm of a JDM car, because this is a homologation special. Now it's not as much of a homologation special as some of the Group B machines like the Lancia 037 Stradale or the Delta S4. Those are ultra rare, extremely expensive used, stuff like the Peugeot 205 T16, that kind of thing. They fetch ridiculous prices second hand. They're great rally cars and they also work on the road. This vehicle, although similar in spirit to those vehicles, isn't quite that extreme. You're not, for instance, looking at paying more than a hundred grand for one of these in used form, whereas for something like a Peugeot 205 T16, you can easily pay over a hundred grand for a good condition one. And even for a bad condition version, of which there aren't that many, you're still looking to pay through the nose for it. Now, one of the advantages of JDM cars rallying or otherwise is that they are generally very affordable. Even the fastest of them, such as RX-7s, Supras, Evos, Impreza's, Skylines, they tend to be really good value and great deals as far as performance for money, not just on the game, but also in real life. If you actually look at the price that you can pick up most JDM cars for, depending perhaps on country, import costs, etc., then they do offer a lot for the price that they go for. Some, of course, are better value than others in that regard, or offer cheaper deals, but generally speaking, they're all pretty good at that. And this particular vehicle is a car which is a version of a line of vehicles that I've never really been a huge fan of, and that's the Toyota Celica. The Celica in more recent years, or at least in its most recent form, is a very watered down version of what it originally was. The Celica started life as the 70s style, almost like a Japanese mini muscle car in its look, kind of like a smaller Mustang-esque vehicle, great looking car. Then through the years it changed, it morphed, it, it almost changed entirely into a totally different thing. This is an example of that total change. In especially the 90s, the Celica became much more of a pure rally-focused machine, with the ST165, ST185 and ST205. Now we've already featured the ST205, which is pretty popular, and you tend to see a few of those used, and they don't fetch huge prices. This one is a little bit rarer, at least from what I've seen. This is the ST185 Celica GT4, and I think this is possibly my favourite Celica if I had to choose one. As I said, I'm not a huge fan of Celicas overall, I don't dislike them, it's just not a vehicle for me. This particular car though has a certain look to it, which does appeal to me. To me, it looks much more like a hardcore almost homage, if you will, to those extreme 80s Group B cars. And I like that appearance. It looks very aggressive. It's suited to looking like a rally car. The ST205 continues that to some degree, but again, the ST205 kind of went back more towards the sports car shape, more aggressive and sleeker like a Supra. And the ST165 is much boxier and more old school. It certainly looks its age. This vehicle kind of nestles between the two. It's round enough to be a full-on sports coupe, but at the same time it's got that rugged, rough, hardcore image to really make it look instantly like a rally car. And I like that. I think that's probably why I prefer this model to most, if not all, other Celicas. But the question is, of course, what does it offer? Because looking good is not that important in the broad scheme of things. In real life, it's great, but on the game, for most people at least, it's about can it win or not. So that is the question. Well, consider what you get. For 32 grand, or a fraction under, you get a 2-litre turbo engine, 
all-wheel drive and in fully tuned form it puts out some decent numbers it doesn't have huge numbers similar to stuff like the Silvia, the S15 in particular the Mazda RX-8, that kind of thing you're looking at 548 horsepower 422 pound-feet of torque it weighs 1196 kilos which isn't as light as you'd probably hope but given the fact that it's not that small and it is all-wheel drive so you've got a few extra mechanical bits and bobs here and there that add to the weight so that's not bad under 1200 kilos certainly isn't bad by any means when you're running just under 550 horsepower as well you're looking at pretty good performance now interestingly enough the PP in fully tuned form is actually exactly the same as the power 548 and I would say it's a decent car at that level be careful where you choose to use it because it is a car that can definitely win races for you even at higher PP levels but you need to choose events which allow you to really use the car's advantages and the advantages of the car are it's pretty nimble it's got a huge amount of grip and the launch is fantastic top end performance isn't as strong as some other JDM cars but being a rally based and focused vehicle that's not surprising now the horsepower per ton is 458 which is pretty good and gives you an inclination of what kind of performance level you could be working with and I would say it lives up to that. The launch off the line is fantastic. Top end performance is good enough for most tracks. The grip is incredible, which is potentially very useful if you're not allowed to use better tires. And the fact that it is a little cheaper than some others makes it, I would say, a pretty good deal. It's an excellent rally car and possibly even a better choice as a rally vehicle than as a road racer. But it can definitely do both and I would recommend checking this car out. But that's it overall for this particular pick. I'll see you guys next time, and as always, thanks for watching.